In this video, we are going to review a personal aircraft unlike anything else we have covered on this channel. It is the Zapata Air Scooter. And the big question is that with the claimed 2 hour flight time, could this be a true game changer? And just as importantly, what kind of engineering makes that possible? Over the past few weeks, we have reviewed the Jetson 1 and several of its Chinese counterparts. While those aircraft impressed many viewers, a few recurring concerns kept popping up in the comment section. The first was the flight time. A 15 to 20 minute endurance didn't sit well with a lot of people. Even though in our opinion, that's perfectly reasonable when you remember that these machines are essentially go-karts of the sky, built for short accelerating flights rather than long range travel. The second issue was weight limits. Many viewers, especially in the US, were frustrated by maximum pilot weights, typically capped around 85 to 90 kilograms. For a recreational aircraft meant to be accessible, that felt restrictive. Well, enter the French with an answer. The Zapata air scooter checks off nearly every box viewers have been asking for. Two hours of flight time, check. Maximum pilot weight of up to 120 kilograms, check. Compact enough to fit in a standard garage, check. And yes, no pilot license is required as it falls under the ultralight regulations. At first glance, the air scooter looks familiar. It uses a multi-copter configuration similar to aircraft like the Hexa and Volocopter. Multiple propellers, vertical takeoff and landing, and computer-assisted flight controls all point towards simplicity and stability. But this aircraft has a hidden trick up its sleeve, something that sets it apart from every other multi-copter we've reviewed. This can be understood once we have looked at the engineering style of its designer. When it comes to innovation, the man behind the air scooter, Frankie Zapata, is no stranger to pushing boundaries. He first gained worldwide attention with the flyboat, a water-powered device that allowed the riders to hover above the surface. That was followed by the flyboat air, a jet-powered platform that went viral after a now legendary video showing it racing a Lamborghini across the desert. That moment marks Zapata's deep interest in microturbine jet propulsion. He went on to develop a stick control version of the flyboat air and demonstrated it at events around the world. Few inventors have spent as much time personally flying and risking the machines they design. He even experimented with adding microturbines to a deck chair style cockpit, effectively creating an early flying car, though noise remained a major challenge. All of that experience, years of testing, crashing, refining and demonstrating, has now culminated in the air scooter. And this time, it wasn't built as a spectacle or a prototype. It was designed specifically with US consumers in mind, targeting recreational pilots who want longer flight times, higher payload capacity and minimal regulatory hurdles. So, let's take a closer look at the design. The A scooter features a carbon fiber composite body with an X-shaped cockpit and a fixed tricycle landing gear. The flight controls are fully computer-assisted fly-by-wire. Empty weight comes around to be 115 kilograms. The propulsion is where things get really interesting. The aircraft uses 14 propellers mounted on four booms. There are four large propellers each about one meter in diameter. Then there are eight smaller propellers for lift and stabilization and two additional propellers dedicated to your control. The four large propellers are driven by customized micro turbine jet engines developed in partnership with Onira and the French Defense Innovation Agency. These turbines run on kerosene. Here's the key innovation. Part of the power generated by these turbines is siphoned off via alternators to produce electricity. That electricity then powers the eight smaller electric propellers. The air scooter carries about five gallons of fuel, along with a battery that acts as an energy buffer. For directional stability in forward flight, early air scooter design used a twin boom tail, something we've also seen recently added to the Volocopter's latest design. However, the air scooter ultimately replaced this with twin yaw motors, adding more active control. In the summer of 2025, Frankie Zapata attempted to demonstrate the air scooter range 
by crossing the English Channel. Unfortunately, the flight was cut short about a quarter of the way across when one of the engines failed. The aircraft plunged into the channel, but both the pilot and the aircraft were successfully recovered. To Zapata's credit, the team didn't shy away from this failure. They openly shared footage of the incident on their YouTube channel, highlighting that some fine-tuning was still needed and, more importantly, discovering those issues before public availability. And that brings us back to the secret behind the air scooter's two-hour endurance micro-turbine jets. This hybrid approach delivers a far greater range than battery-only multi-copters while still maintaining a relatively compact and stable platform. Overall, the A-Scooter feels both safer and more immersive. The open cockpit offers an unobstructed panoramic view and the propellers aren't visually overwhelming or right in your face. You are very much in the elements but without feeling exposed. The price around 250,000 US dollars. Yes, it's a hefty tag, but it also delivers something no other personal VTOL currently does real endurance and meaningful payload capacity. So, what do you think about the air scooter? Is it the future of personal flight or still a niche machine for a select few? Do let me know in the comments below. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, then please do give it a thumbs up.